Hey everyone, this is Paul Gale from paulgalenetwork.com and thank you for joining me for this Resident Evil Showcase. It is January 21st, 2021 and we have about 40 seconds to go until this thing starts. I'm pretty excited. We're definitely going to see some Resident Evil 8 footage today. I hope it's next gen. I think it's going to be a title that is cross-gen. You know, so that it comes out on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, as well as PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S and X, and of course PC, perhaps Nintendo Switch, but ideally next-gen only. Fully take advantage of that hardware power, but if it's cross-gen, hey, maybe there will be different SKUs that really show off the potential and the difference. Regardless, this is exciting. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to our Resident Evil Showcase. I'm your host, Brittany Brombacher, here to give you a closer look into what Capcom has coming up for the Resident Evil franchise. We'll be kicking things off with some brand new content and an exclusive first look at Resident Evil Village gameplay that you do not want to miss. So without further ado, let's get started. Sweet. Hey now, think positively, all right? We talked about this. I know. Hard to talk about anything else. Because he is in my castle and has already proven too much for my daughters to handle. When I find him. No, Mother Miranda. Yes, of course, I understand the importance of the ceremony. I won't let you down. <laughs> Boy, that R E engine. Tell me what the hell is going on here? No, the place is full of nothing but blood and death. It's looking good. Who the fuck are you? Let's see what you're really made of. Ethan Winters. <laughs> Capcom does good. That was amazing, but I still have so many questions. Like, when can I pre-order this thing? Perhaps producer Pete Fabiano has some answers for us. Let's see what he has to say. Hey everyone, I'm Pete Fabiano, producer on Resident Evil Village. When we first announced Resident Evil Village back in June, we only mentioned PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and PC. I'm happy to announce we've been working hard to bring the survival horror experience onto current generation consoles as well. Thought so. Resident Evil Village will also be coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One 
day and date with next gen. The PS4 version can be upgraded for free to the digital PS5 version. And the Xbox One version gives you free access to the game on Xbox Series X through smart delivery. It's also my pleasure to tell you exactly when you can get your hands on the game. Mm, good, release date. Resident Evil Village May 7th. will be available worldwide on May 7th, 2021, with pre-orders kicking off today. Alongside the standard edition, we have a few other options for the game. First, we have Digital Deluxe Edition, available on all platforms. Players will be able to heighten their survival horror experience with extra content, including in-game items that call back to Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. There's also a Collector's Edition for consoles that includes all the Deluxe Edition content, as well as a striking figure of Chris Redfield, a steelbook case, poster, and art book. And for those of you who haven't played the previous entry, we have the Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 7 biohazard bundle. This lets you get your hands on the award-winning RE7 while you wait for Resident Evil Village. Pre-order any of these editions, good. and you'll be able to get your hands on both the Mr. Raccoon weapon accessory and their survival resource pack, which will offer additional support during the first few hours of gameplay. Finally, digital pre-orders from the PlayStation Store will receive an exclusive Resident Evil Village mini soundtrack. All right, I've been waiting for this. I know you've been waiting for this. It's time for the world premiere first look at Resident Evil Village gameplay. Along this is what I'm looking forward look, to. We have Pete Fabiano back to offer some insights as well. Let's take a look. You know, with these games, it kind of makes sense to buy the PS4 or Xbox One versions of them, whether that's physically or digitally, if you have a PS5 or Xbox like Series X. You'll be taking because you can play it on of Ethan both of your consoles. You'll make your way from the village to the castle. Players will need to get in and search for their kidnapped daughter. As you've noticed by now, Resident Evil Village keeps the first person perspective. We think it really draws players into the detailed world we've created. Very detailed and very you smooth. A lot of those little details come to life here. The team put a ton of effort into creating a truly authentic feel. From art design to technology, everything ties in great and creates some beautiful visuals. Now it's time to meet some of the castle denizens. As you'd expect, a warm welcome's not really what's in store for you. Man, blood. That hurt. Oh. Now, let's take a look at it. Ethan Winters, you escaped my little brother's idiot games, did you? Let's see how special you are. Shifting gears a bit, we're finally going to show off some combat. It's not just about shooting. Guarding will also be an important part of the game. That smoke coming off. That looks Each nice. Type of enemy has their oh, own nice. Way of fighting, so you'll need to change up your strategy to defeat them. Everyone knows what to do with red barrels. Right? Yep. Some of you will remember a similar management system in Resident Evil 4. This time around, we've added crafting which allows you to create items such as first aid and ammo. There's also an assortment of weapons to find and utilize throughout the game.
modern elements, yet some old school things that carry over. That works. How do you know my name? Anyone who is anyone has heard of the likes of you. The merchant makes a return. This time he's known as the Duke. What are you buying? You'll be going to him to what buy are you selling? Weapons, amongst other things. Okay. He looks fun. The merchant wanted to give him a unique look, and you'll often find him in different situations each time you encounter him. He's an interesting fella. Smash away with your trusty knife. There's plenty of items to find in his house. Wait, do you hear that? And we've also got extra objectives outside of the main one. Of course, it goes without saying that there'll be plenty of puzzles to solve for players to move forward. Oh, and uh, plenty of surprises to keep you on your toes. Oof. Showing you what's in store for Resident Evil Village. Let's take a look at the exclusive PlayStation 5 demo. Ooh, when is that dropping? Because I will play this tonight if this is available today. For this demo, players won't be playing as Ethan, but as a character we're referring to as the Maiden. Unlike the actual game, this experience doesn't feature combat or even blocking. We're hoping to have players get a real feel for the visuals and audio as they take the maiden on her journey to find a way out of the castle. And you can download the exclusive oh, demo sweet. on PlayStation 5 today. Course, All right. We want as many people as possible to get a chance to play. So we'll have a separate new demo available on all platforms ready for sometime this spring. It's probably a late March. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the Resident Evil franchise, with the very first game releasing in Japan back on March 22nd, 1996. Since then, the series has expanded well beyond the realm of video games. From toys and board games to CG movies to live action Hollywood films, Resident Evil has become a cultural icon. Resident Evil continues to offer surprises around every corner, so let's pass it along to producer Tsuyoshi Kanda to hear more about what you can expect in 2021. Earlier this month, we started inviting players to join Cloud's beta test. The test won't happen until later next week, but I want to use this chance to reveal more details. With the 25th anniversary of Resident Evil coming on March 22nd, we are excited to celebrate this milestone with our fans. Last September, we showed off a piece of key art showcasing some of Resident Evil's iconic characters to start the celebration. Now, I'm happy to announce what was behind that. Let's take a look. Reavers. Well, that's cool. Our reverse is one of the ways we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the franchise. 
showcasing so many of the characters that fans love. It'll be available for free to anyone who purchases Resident Evil Village. So be sure to follow the Resident Evil social channels for the latest news. And check out the official website for even more details. On behalf of Massive Entertainment and Ubisoft, congratulations to the Resident Evil mm. on their 25th nice. anniversary. We can't wait to get our hands on our reverse. For the occasion, we are bringing a celebration to our game, Tom Clancy's The Division 2. For a limited time, you will be able to collect some of the iconic outfits and items from the original Resident Evil trilogy. Everyone that logs in during the event will get Leon Kennedy's Raccoon Police Department outfit as a warm-up. Now let's have a look at some of these. That's kind of cool, some crossover love. Yeah, I can't wait to play Village tonight. Now, it's interesting because PlayStation 5 will be the console that gets the exclusive demo today of Maiden. But, if I had a guess, maybe around March 22nd we'll get that other demo on all platforms. That's a more traditional demo of what to experience in the game, shooting and walking and whatnot. That's pretty cool. Netflix is doing good things. Resident Evil, bring it on. Bring on some more. Wow, a lot's been happening, and I hope you enjoyed watching. But if you missed anything along the way, don't worry. Keep an eye on the Resident Evil social channels and official website, which will be sharing everything from today's show. As a quick reminder, Resident Evil Village is available for pre-order starting today for the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and Steam for PC. And don't forget, PlayStation 5 owners get a sneak peek through downloadable content available worldwide starting today. It has been an absolute honor to celebrate the amazing Resident Evil leading up to its 25th anniversary with all of you across the globe. I'm your host, Brittany Brombacher, and thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Is that it? It feels like that's it. I don't know if there's going to be that one more thing. Would be cool, but I don't think so. Okay, so I did fully expect that Resident Evil 8, Resident Evil Village would be available for, you know, older consoles as well because you're releasing a game with this big of a budget so early into the life of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series brand of consoles that they just don't have the install base yet. You know, if there are several million people that own either platform by May, then at best that's how many resident evil village copies that you could sell and that's if it was a one-to-one -one ratio right and that's just not going to happen so by maximizing ah we've got this playstation 4 install base of 114 million and we've got this xbox one install base of 50 million and you know now we have ps5 and xbox series s and x at several million the game has a greater chance of succeeding hopefully the game is truly optimized where you can see and feel a significant difference playing on the next-gen consoles. Um, you know, they had the ability to go 4K. They could nail it at 60 frames per second. They could include all the bells and whistles from ray tracing to more texture work, stronger performance in terms of the visual fidelity of the game, higher quality polygon models you know better lighting and so forth but we'll see um, as far as the size and the scope of the game and you know the geometry behind the environments you could only kind of make the whole game really based off of what its weakest element is and that would be the base xbox one 
you kind of saw what happened with Cyberpunk 2077, where, yes, it ran across all of the platforms, but if it wasn't for having to build it on Xbox One and PS4, the game probably could have had an even higher imagination level, you know, and wouldn't be limited by those constraints. Now, ended up what happening is, you know, we got a fine, competent version across high-end PCs, PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, but it's really those old platforms that didn't, you know, live up to snuff. Resident Evil 8, I have a feeling it will be much more better in terms of optimization properly across the board. Xbox One base, PS4 base, Pro, One X models, One S, and then of course, you know, Series S, X, and PS5. Jeez, that's a lot of uh, commentary, but I think the game will be fine. But I just hope that what we are not seeing in a larger size and scope of what the game probably could have been built from the ground up, we make up for it in just visual quality and overall performance that, you know, this is solid. Now, what will I buy it on? Well, that remains to be seen. I will definitely play it first on PlayStation 5, that's for sure. Um, it also looks like the digital version of the PS5 gets one extra perk with that soundtrack, so that's kind of two pluses on that side of the fence, although really just one because aside from the demo, then it goes back to being, you know, neutral territory, right? Comes down to, do I want to play this with the Xbox Series X controller, which is great, or with the PlayStation 5 controller, which is comparatively just as good, like in terms of feeling and stuff like that, both controllers are very solid, but what they do, you know, the PS5 controller would be the only one that would potentially have gyroscope aiming. Hmm. So that's a little bit something extra. Hasn't been confirmed, but it's the only one that could between those two. You know, it has, I want to say, a, a better slash um, more intricate design process when it comes to its rumble. I want to say HD rumble, but, you know, different, different name, but uh, similar effect with its trigger sensitivity with that feeling that's, you know, quite unique in the PS5 DualSense. Um, I like it quite a bit. Now, if the games ran the same, same 4K, same resolution, same level of visual fidelity, same performance, 60 frames per second, even, and they looked exactly the same, I guess I'd get the PS5 version because the potential controller offering more is there and you just get an extra soundtrack cd bonus so why not right however if it comes down to it and let's say the xbox series x version is the one that oh no it's the one that you know is the steady 60 it handles ray tracing better it's got you know pure 4k without any dips and it just got that little bit extra shine in terms of shadows, you know, where both games look beautiful. It's just that one looks a little bit more beautiful. The PS5 version, after running for some benchmarks, are like, ah, it's like at that 57 frames per second territory. And the graphics, you know, go from 4K and they just dip a little bit once in a while in certain locations. And, you know, a little bit less texture work, by a smidge. You know, it's not going to be a problem. I'm just saying hypothetically, right? Then I guess I would go with the Xbox version because in this case, the controllers are similar enough in terms of quality that I would be willing to let go of potentially more out of the controller if it meant getting more out of the overall game, you know? Different people, people will feel differently if you gave that same scenario to different folks. And you'll have to let me know in the comments, you know, what if the games ran like this where the Xbox version was a little bit better but you actually preferred that PS5 controller a smidge because of what it could do or what it does in the game you know what matters more to you as a gamer then again if the PS5 controller doesn't take advantage of the dual sense and it doesn't take advantage of any gyroscope aiming no motion controls then it becomes easier to say okay if the Xbox version outperforms it, then you're not even looking at a thing of, ah, the PS5, I'm missing out on those control op extra options, right? But, you know, these are all scenarios that I'm coming up with, contemplating. Of course, the easiest decision is 
if Capcom says, oh yeah, by the way, on the PlayStation 5, you get full advantage, you take full advantage of DualSense. All the guns feel differently when you're pulling those triggers, you're feeling the rumble from the controller differently, the haptic feedbacks are really taking advantage of it. You could also do DualSense aiming in first person and stuff like that. And visually it's better and it actually runs the best on it. PlayStation 5 in terms of performance and frame rate resolution, graphics, extra shadows, then like, okay, why would you not get the PS5 version? The only person that wouldn't if they had both consoles is they're just so ingrained in the Xbox culture of that controller and they actually just don't like the PS5 controller and stuff and doesn't feel good in their hands. It's too big. Now, everyone's got different reasons, but uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of tricky to think of all these third-party games that run comparably probably throughout this upcoming generation where do you get the games on it makes it a little bit easier when a system whether it's sony or microsoft pays a developer like now we want this thing as a timed exclusive on our hours or uh you know we're given an extra skin or you know an extra soundtrack cd digital soundtrack that's included with it or, or you know uh something like that you know but aside from that it becomes a little bit tough what do you want a game on this time around hmm you have to let me know what you think if i if i had to lean towards something right now probably getting the playstation 4 version yes the ps4 version because if i get that version i could play it on the ps4 and the ps5 and the ps5 I already know it's going to get a bonus soundtrack, and um, the potential of the dual sense has me excited, but that's just you know skeptical. So I'm not pre-ordering just yet, because on the other hand, getting it on Xbox One is also solid because I think the Xbox ecosystem of backwards compatibility and future compatibility is kind of a more safe bet than Sony systems. You know, like will the PlayStation Six? or the next Xbox console be backwards compatible? If I had to put my money on it, I would say the next Xbox will. The next PlayStation probably will, but you know I'm leaning more towards Xbox being the one to more likely have that in. So I don't know. Uh, I don't think you, know, you can make a wrong decision either way, but for people that own both consoles, it will be interesting to see where my fellow gamers go. All right. That's going to do it today. Later today, we're going to have some video game news, so stay tuned for that. Also, I might do a separate video because we've got some exciting Godzilla vs. Kong news today. But okay, that's going to do it for video game news. Oh, sorry. See, I'm already talking about video game news. <laughs> that's going to do it today for this Resident Evil showcase. Thank you for watching. This is Paul Gale Network signing out, and I will see you later for more. Bye.